Welcome to Webinar Wednesday. We have a very exciting presentation for you this week, featuring several innovative biomeds that are using YouTube to develop and enhance their HTM careers. Joining us in today's discussion are Justin Barber, BMET, and host of Better Biomed YouTube channel, Edgardo Bautista, a biomed support engineer and host of DIY Eddy YouTube channel, and Jason Klutz, technician and owner of Bright Idea Dental Repair and host of Dental Equipment Repair Channel. Last but not least, we do have Ben C., the silent <laughs> panelist in the face of MedWrench. Please check out the handout section of the webinar dashboard for a reference sheet that will provide you with today's panelist information and the links to their YouTube channels so you can like and subscribe. Webinar Wednesday would like to thank our sponsor, MedWrench. MedWrench is an online medical equipment community where medical professionals, manufacturers, dealers, and industry experts can ask questions, provide opinions, and share ideas. MedWrench provides the quickest way to find medical equipment information for everything from troubleshooting problems to purchasing. Visit MedWrench.com to set up a complimentary account today. A few announcements before we get started. We'd love for you to join us for continuing education, networking, and vendor engagement opportunities at our HTM Mixer coming up on September 9th and 10th in Kansas City. Please visit htmmixer.com for details, registration, and details on how we're making sure your meeting environment is safe and clean. While you're there, please make sure to sign up for our newsletter so you'll always have the most up-to-date information. Let's give one lucky attendee the opportunity to win a fun Webinar Wednesday shirt by answering the following question. What are two of the popular service categories offered on the MedWrench site? You can find the answer by visiting <laughs> MedWrench.com. Please use the questions feature on the GoToWebinar dashboard to submit your answer. Our panelists are not allowed to answer. <laughs> <laughs> As always, today's webinar is eligible for one continuing education credit from the ACI. You can obtain your certificate by completing the post-webinar survey. We'll have more details on this at the end of today's webinar. We would like for you to use this opportunity to present questions to our panelists. Please feel free to submit your questions at any time during the webinar by using the questions feature on the webinar dashboard. We'll get through as many questions as time allows. I'll turn our discussion over today to our panelists to get started. Justin, please begin whenever you're ready. All right, thank you very much. First off, I'd like to thank Jason and Eddie. I've been trying to get this arranged for a long time and MedWrench finally allowed it to happen uh, because I didn't have the technology to be able to get multiple people speaking at the same time. So thank you for that, guys. I really appreciate it. This is an excellent, excellent thing. Um, well, I, I've been a Biomed for 18 years now and normally I specialize in surgical but uh, lately I've been doing a lot of laboratory equipment and whatnot, and uh, I've been doing YouTube for almost three years now. So it's been quite the journey, different hospitals treat uh, filming differently, but uh, despite all those roadblocks and everything, we're still here and we're, we're going stronger than ever. So thank you very much, guys. What about you, Jason? Hi. I'm Jason Klutz. I own Bright Idea Dental Repair, and I started a... Uh, well, I've been a biomed for about 20 years now. Um, I went through the DOD biomed course in 2001. And then about uh, four years ago, I started my own business. It was originally j d Medical Maintenance. I tried to get started as a, as a biomed in the private sector, but um, there's a little bit of a uh, way that happened. But um, the uh, end result has been I've gravitated toward, toward dental. Dental's pulled me in. And I've got some really interesting information about the dental uh, layout that I think is really going to be uh, interesting. Every biomed I've talked to, this has been really captivating for them. So I'm excited to share today. So I've owned my business for about four years now, and I've got three technicians and two admins plus myself. And so it's been a, a wild ride. We're just busy every day. It's been fun. 
So Eddie, uh, please tell us about yourself, man. Yes, my name is uh, Edgardo Bautista. Um, I'm a current owner of Inland Biomedical Services. Um, same like Jason, I went through the DOD school uh, in 2010 um, to the new uh, Fort Sam Houston. Uh, from there, I was a instructor for the uh, as a contractor for the military. Went through hospitals and then ventured off to uh, my own business. Um, I've had my uh, YouTube channel I think since 20. Well, I've opened it in 2013, but I started uploading videos in um, 2017 when uh, I started doing barbecue and stuff like that. But I slowly integrated more stuff and have uh, a lot more medical um, refurbishment and, um, you know, processes that we do here. Um, so I'm excited for this opportunity. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, uh, first off, can I can I ask you guys like why did you guys start making YouTube videos? Like, let's let's just start off with there because me, I'm a nerd and I <laughs> I, I do it for other reasons. But I'm really curious. You guys are both business owners. That's so cool. And why did you guys start doing YouTube videos? For me, the first instructional video that I ever did was in the beginning uh, of the pandemic. And what occurred to me is when Michigan was shutting down that um, there were a whole lot of offices that were gonna be going into mothballs. And one of the main factors of a dental service, I'm sure anybody that's had experience um, with dental equipment knows a biofilm. And um, my theory with dental equipment, just a sidebar, is that there's so much work with dentistry because it's all got water in it. Autoclaves, delivery units, you know, just specialty items with water, vacuum pumps and whatnot. But when the pandemic started, it became appear clear to me that there were a lot of offices that were going to go from a period of production every day to months of non-use. And so I made a video for staff members to understand how to air purge their delivery units. And at that point, it really occurred to me that it was a valuable means of being able to um, deliver procedural and corrective um, steps to a wider audience than I could ever do just by going and teaching on site. Because teaching has always been one of my passions um, as a business owner, but I just realized that the need with the pandemic exceeded what I was able to do in person. Interesting. Well, about you, Eddie? So uh, I have a construction background. That's before I went to the military. Um, economy kind of hit, brought down. So um, I was initially gonna join the military, back in high school but i kind of postponed that for a while until i had no other option um so with my being construction being my background that's when i i would always build stuff i'm always very technical very i like teaching people stuff i like learning a lot about stuff but i like teaching people about stuff so when i started building my barbecue i thought well let's let, let me put that out there to show how easy it is for people to learn I mean, I'm not teaching step by step, but I'm showing what I'm doing along the process. So someone with minimal skills that could go ahead and learn that. Um, and then from being in the hospital, um, for me, it was about being, um, I guess the accuracy and being able to reproduce the same test results with whatever technician. And I think that comes strong from my instructional back background as a uh, biomed instructor. Um, at the RTS Med in uh, in Dublin, um, so I just figured, you know, there there should be a way for people to, you know, if they have questions, if if they want to learn different skills, maybe they're entry level biomed, they you know they want to go up and, and find out how to do ESUs or do anything else. It, there's no better platform than YouTube. I, I, when I have questions, I, I don't Google it. I go YouTube first, and you learn off of other people. And um, I think that's that's why it just keeps pushing me more and more. And uh, like I mentioned, I have a lot more videos to come out on on the medical side, especially like on the ventilation and everything else that I have going on now. But uh, that's just kind of one of the pushes is, is to try to help people that were in my shoes before help them advance and uh, not only advance, but uh, do stuff accurately and, and safely to make sure there's a standard. Huh. No. I keep getting people asking me all the time, like, 
how do I get into biomed and there's no information posted about biomed? Have you guys been getting the same responses from the from the general public that it's generally an unrepresented career field? Yeah, I want to say yes, but it is growing. Um, I've had a lot of family members, you know, how can I get in? I, maybe I have some family members that, that did electronics in the Navy in another country. Um, just trying to transition to something a lot more secure. A lot of people think about the healthcare field, dental field, being a secure environment. I think that's something that, that should be pushed a lot more. And there, there's a lot more, I'm seeing a lot more um, private trainings. Um, as far as the entry level biomed, you could go and, and take these private courses, college courses, all that. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely something that comes up. I definitely am always an advocate for the biomed uh, career field. Um, I tell people, you know, I think as biomeds, we're problem solvers. And we're probably that guy in the neighborhood where, you know, the Facebook group, somebody's got a broken washer, dry or something. We're the ones that are able to fix it. I see you guys smiling. You know, you probably oh, yeah. fixed an AC or two this season, right? You know, I've got one of my YouTube videos is fixing my own AC. It broke and it took within 30 minutes, I got it fixed. I like hot, my I hot videoed it. And I actually videotaped myself figuring it out. And it was like a 30 minute uh, process. But it was uh, that type of thing where, um, I believe, you know, especially Eddie and I through the military have been given a gift of being able to focus for 11 months straight and be paid and to learn how to do this career field. And, and what struck me is the military way of doing it, of providing a structured way of, of learning electronics theory, medical theory, and then kind of like advancing through individual devices in a manner where you learn the easier ones and then the harder ones. And um, I'm actually training technicians. Um, now, I don't know what the what the pulse finger on the pulse is. I know in the Air Force, um, dental was kind of one of those things where you didn't really want to mess with it, right? You want to get away from there. But I was an imaging guy. I, I was surgery and then imaging. I was running an imaging team and um, I, uh, but here I am back at dental. And um, so, I'm taking the way that I learned and I've actually got my team of three guys. I'm actually building them from scratch. I've got one guy I'm teaching autoclaves, another guy that I'm teaching delivery units and another guy I'm teaching compressors and vacuums. And so what I'm doing is trying to break that equipment down to the granular level and accessing um, the uh, type of um, literature that exists out on the internet to pull up schematics and to you know, do trainings uh, specifically geared at a, at a device. And um, part of the thing uh, I'll say about my business is I have a, a huge warehouse full of equipment. Used equipment is really, um, I'm kind of, I was thinking today about the future of the biomed. And I really believe that our future as biomeds kind of has a foot in the past because I don't know, I don't think you can understand the, 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 the brand new bleeding edge without understanding how it used to be. And, and what the foundational equipment is and being able to actually see components on a board and understand kind of how things are connected. Because when you're looking at these like little tiny boards with everything coming in and going out and it's basically trash if it doesn't work, give me the big old stuff with huge wires <laughs> where you can go ahead and you know follow the wires, trace them. You can see a fuse that's broken. You know, you can see and teach based on that better than you can these little things that break as soon as you touch them. So um, maybe got a little bit off there, but I wanted to kind of, you know, maybe get going in a direction um, and kind of give you a little bit of taste for where I'm at. I love the past. I love old equipment. And I believe um, to answer your question, getting people started, um, there is an abundance of used equipment. There's an abundance of things that are coming out on the market that can be had for free or cheap. Yeah. And all the literature exists for that. So for anybody that's really interested in breaking into this, I mean, hey, get an old pump that has a manual and then, you know, eBay's out there. You can buy them for 25, 50 bucks and then basically take it upon yourself because biomed is a career field that where you've got to be, um, my favorite term I've ever heard for being a biomed is technically curious. If you're a technically curious person, you are going to exceed and do so great in this career field. So that kind of is for somebody who's maybe listening, like I, I'd like to be a biomed or maybe a way that we can be an advocate 
of, of, of kind of like, hey, how do I do it? Hey, try to get some equipment. I'll help you get the books for it. And then maybe we can sit down and I can coach you because it might be one of those things where they need that guiding hand to kind of get them started. Yep. Well, guys, uh, let's go ahead and take some questions from uh, some of the people that are submitting them so we don't get too far off track. Um, what do you got for us over there? All right. How about what are the challenges of business ownership? Mm. Who wants to take that one? You want me to take it, Eddie? Or do you want to take you, it? You can take it first. I'll, I'll come in after. Okay. Okay. Um, I would say the, the challenges of business ownership are when I first started my business, um, I learned really fast that I could go out there and find business as an independent. Okay. I'm technically an independent service provider. I compete against multi-billion dollar companies that are, uh, or, you know, million billion. I think Shiner Patterson are probably billion. I don't know. They're a lot of money, right? A lot. And so the, um, uh, the challenges of owning a business are as a small operator, okay, if you're, if you stay small and keep it all, you're the only one that's there to do the work, which means that, um, what I've learned is, is when you do a good job, okay, you build a, a reputation in dentistry. It's all about refer referrals. And so what happens is when somebody is pleased with you, they will tell their buddy who will tell their buddy and you, and you'll be going good in the beginning. But what will happen is it's a wave and it'll build and it'll start to crush you. And so what you'll find is that you're going to need help. And this is where I believe we're going to go a little bit later on about what you can do to kind of like find opportunities. Because a guy like me that starts a business, what's going to happen is I'm going to start to get crushed by all these autoclaves, bench work, I mean, uh, uh, jobs in the field. And the challenge is in the beginning, you have to do it all yourself because you can't afford any full time employees. And then what happens is it gets to be so much work that you need the employees. So now you've got all these things of running a business like payroll, you've got insurances, you've got other people who aren't you, they're not the owner, so they're never really going to work as hard as you do. And you're, um, you're really going to be in for a challenge, an uphill challenge, and, and we're, we've been really living that. Yeah, Jason, you have, you have some really good points. Um, one really uh, point that I want to... Uh, point out when it comes to business ownership is dedication dedication the stressfulness um, you being a push yourself having a support system behind you um, in the beginning it was uh, owning a business you have to have all types of skills customer service uh, especially in the in the service field your customer service you're coding out you're, you're basically doing everything 100% uh, when I first started it was uh, I'll just touch bre really brief on this I was working in the morning, eight hours. I'd go home, take a shower, and go to my afternoon work. That was a year straight. So there's motivation, points of, 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 of a business ownership where your motivation is really low. There's some that are really high, um, but overall, I wouldn't change it for anything. Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely love it. Um, there, there's months that are great. There's months that we have to keep working and figure out okay what's the next step here and that's you have to keep challenging yourself and the best thing is having that support system behind you to help push you whether it's a family member whether it's a wife maybe your kids motivate you whatever it is that's the most important thing for me excellent guys, great, guys. all right our next question is um where do you get inspiration for your youtube channel mm. Okay, uh, I guess I'll start that. Um, every day, every single day, if I had the time to make a video for everything I experience or things I tell other people throughout the day, things that other people should know. Um, that's why my channel like goes in all different directions because uh, every single day I experience something new and something that I wish I'd known you know, a couple years ago. So that's that's where I get inspiration every single day that I'm on the job. Uh, every time I work with new biomeds and people write me all the time. I don't I hope you guys are getting written by a bunch of people, too. And and those letters that they write into you are very encouraging. And at the same time, it's, it's encouraging towards the future because these people are hungry. And that's what that's what drives me to make these videos. So what about you, Jason? 
Well, I have to admit, my inspiration for actually starting the YouTube channel was with a particular channel. I've got a few channels that I really enjoy. I know we all do. Um, one of them is uh, like my total YouTube hero is Colin Furs. Um, he's digging a tunnel right now to his basement, and it's it's incredible. Um, and like that's like uh, you know I, that's the enjoyment for me. Like that for me, the creative process that he goes through is um, really just that's pulled me in right um now the youtube um channel that has that really led me to buy the cameras um i bought a larger camera to begin with like a full camera and then i moved to a gopro but um the it, it's it's called the drain addict and i don't you might not have even heard of this channel he's an aussie who actually uh he clears drains with a water jet and it's the it's the most disgusting thing ever but the dude carries the camera like in his mouth and he, it's like a first person exposure to everything he's seeing and he does it. And I got to thinking to myself, man, you know, wouldn't it be great? I'm not gonna carry it in my mouth, but what if I have this um, like a little, like a little chest strap thing and, you know, carry the camera on my chest so that as I'm working, you see the hands. And I've actually done a couple videos like that where I've been, uh, you know, able to kind of do like a first person. My, my favorite one was a compressor repair where it's like, you hear me like slam in the door and it's like, you feel like you're there. And I walk in and I'm just freaking walking the door like a boss and I go straight to it. And then I, I spend probably too much time, but I basically go through, I'm kind of talking to myself and I'm, I'm discussing like what I'm seeing, but it's kind of like with the drain addict, it's like, you're there with him and you're seeing what he's seeing and you're, you're seeing the mistakes. The point isn't perfection, but it's just being along. Because as, a, as biomeds, I feel like we have to make an assumption about the condition of the equipment in order to establish a direction. And um, with the YouTube, it's kind of just this really raw experience where you kind of get to go down some of the wrong rabbit trails in order to get to the right answer. And so some of my challenge with the YouTube is, is I've kind of had to learn how do I kind of tell the story of the repair and, and, and actually how do I like identify what's going to have a good story at the end? Because I, I don't want to like videotape something and the end ends up being like non-repairable or something that really ends up being kind of a bland experience. And so for me, it's the drain addict and really that first person how do you get the camera in a way where your arms are visible? I love the, the arms working, you know, seeing the tools, because it feels like it's almost like you doing it. Interesting. <laughs> so what motivated me to kind of start my channel? Um, I've always been a jack of all trade, and it's called jack of all trade, master of none. So we, we know a lot, but we don't really master anything. And, and I could get my hands on anything. I could fix it, um, or I could attempt to fix it. Um, I could build every, I could build whatever I want to put myself to. And I figured if I have all this knowledge, I feel like I need to share it. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's other people out there that are just kind of want to do something, but they're they're not finding the push. And I feel like when they go on YouTube, they see something that motivates them. They're like, oh, it's something that's so complicated when they, you know, when they think of it in their head. And then they start it by watching the YouTube video. They start on their own and they figure out, wow, this, this wasn't that hard. Um, so that, that's kind of one of the motivations for me is to try to share my experience and share my knowledge to those out there. And, and um, same like Jason, you know, I, I watch Cohen and then I watch um, Gary V. But uh, my, my favorite, I've watched him for about a year and a half, is uh, Ben Mala. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with him or not really really big commercial investor um i'm always trying to grow in different directions and jason knows that i speak to him i have twenty thousand things you know new things that are coming my way and trying to pursue but um, there's always motivational factors and the same thing i want to kind of push with the youtube channel as well that's good man yeah we've all had excellent mentors in the past and it just seems like a shame that a lot of these guys are either dying off or they're retiring and all that knowledge is just gone and we've all been thrown under the bus when those people leave us. So, I mean, it, it's good that we get to share a little piece of each of those people that came before us with the people that are coming. I would, I would call that concept, and, and I'm always aware of this in organizations, um, is a leadership pipeline. And um, 
you know, if we're talking about the future of the biomed, um, the future involves bringing in people that are going to be less knowledgeable, that are going to be kind of that bright eyed um, young guy that doesn't know anything. And we've got to be patient and not push them away, but we've got to really like embrace them. And, and I think you can always tell the health of an organization by, you know, what is the, the, the diversity of age, of experience? If you've got kind of all the dots are connected, then you're going to end up with an organization where, hey, when the top guy retires, there's like healthy movement. And I would say for all of us, if we're moving into an organization where it's just a bunch of like old guys at the top, you know, there's probably a lot of pain ahead, you know, like because um, they're probably all going to retire at the same time. You know, there's probably like this boy, good old boy club you got to kind of break into. And, you know, I think there's a there's a new school and an old school. And I've learned this in dental, dental repair. The old school is kind of this like, I've got to hold on to the information because that information gives me power and it gives me uh, a strength and relevance. And the new school, I believe we're part of that. We're part of the, the, the empowerment. We want to like help people grow. We realize that we don't want to have it all hang on our shoulders. I think as business owners, this is like me and Eddie, I think we realize this, that if, if we're the only one that knows anything, eventually we're just going to burn out. So there is a piece of that where you've got to have the maturity to know that empowering other people really is part of your legacy. And that's important. Excellent. Well, uh, what else do we have from the, uh, the viewers? All right. We have so many questions that have come in. They're all great. <laughs> the first one is, in 10 years, what do you imagine the biomed field will look like? Oh, man. Well, I'll tell you, first off, um, one thing that's absolutely certain is we're going to have a position in almost every biomed shop at, a, at every hospital I know of that's going to be a medical networking specialist. I mean, right now, like it's, it's either your IT or your biomed. No, it's going to happen. We will have a intermediary um, position where somebody is going to specialize in getting this device to work on this medical network. And uh, that for all you guys is going to be an excellent area. If you got computer certs, a computer degree or something like that, go into medical networking, please. We need these people. But um, I could honestly see that from now on, like competency training and stuff is going to be kind of like what we're doing. It's going to be a video because in what, five minutes, you can learn what would take you hours and otherwise. So I, I think that in the future, we will have some sort of competency training as we strive towards some sort of regulation of, of our career field. And, you know, it's going to be something like uh, what nurses have to go through. So what do you think, Jason? I think a lot of uh, same. I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm that part really makes me like excited inside because computers <laughs> yeah. really kind of suck my soul away. Uh, <laughs> but I, believe that there there's definitely there's there's no doubt things are going to be connected and things are going to be computerized and i really believe um um i believe personally it actually kind of saddens me a little bit because i see there's a lot of quality equipment that exists where you know they, they've kind of like broke the mold to make something new like less good and i think um in the future we're going to have to really understand the goals of these companies that are selling the equipment and I would say that in the future, our role, as it's always been, but I think even more so, we're going to have to really help our customers understand how to spend their dollars. And we're going to really help, have to help them sort out the hidden costs of, 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 of equipment ownership. Because, you know, when you buy a piece of equipment and then you need a software for it to work, and then there's a license you got to buy, and then there's, you know, I really believe that there's, um, that it's going to be up to us to help our custom, help our businesses understand where to spend their dollars. And then maybe, just maybe in a way, we can help our industry, like, I don't know, like kind of stay, keep a foot in reality. Because I know like computerized stuff is great, but I also know that 10 years from now, they're still gonna need troubleshooters. They're gonna still need critical thinkers. And um, I know right now, like owning a business, it's hard, but it was actually really easy to start. So I would like to kind of speak that on the career field that maybe as part of what I'm learning and I'm trying, 
I'm really trying to be a voice for biomeds to tell you that, that there's this thing called dentistry out there and it is nuts. I honestly would like to say in 10 years, there would be a lot more operators doing dental equipment service, dental equipment repair. Um, these big, huge companies, a couple of them are, are, are they, they're big companies and they need competition because what breaks my heart more than anything is seeing one of my customers abused by a larger company just because they're too big to have to care. And I think that integrity that we bring, because biomeds as a whole, right? Like we have so much on our shoulders. We always have, right? We're keeping people alive through our hands. Um, one of my greatest senses of pride when I was in California at Vaca Valley Hospital, I was a sole biomed in a 50 bed hospital. My initials were on every single device in our emergency room in 12 bays. And I knew that anybody from our community of 100,000 people that came to our hospital was gonna be interacting with one of the pieces of equipment that I kept running. And so I, I think there's gonna to continue to be a tremendous sense of pride. And again, with YouTube, hopefully, we kind of like knock down some of those barriers to in, in, in entry. Not everybody can enter like Eddie and I did. And I think the military path is, while it's excellent, I think it, it is limited. And the internet really is, YouTube is, you know, we're trying to like level the playing field and get more people involved. Yeah, I definitely agree with Jason and uh, Justin as well. So coming from, uh, I used to work at Kaiser Reef Pool between Ellsworth and um, uh, my business. But uh, from the hospital side, when I was in the hospital, I did see a lot of stuff being integrated. Uh, we had uh, clinical integration specialists, um, but a lot of times they weren't really aware of what the equipment does, such as a biomed, right? We, we know what they do. We know what the end result is supposed to be in uh, the record system. So they were kind of in between just wiring here and there. So maybe like a glorified IT specialist. Um, but I do see on the hospital side, being able to be more hands-on with that integration. Um, as far as the business side, I see that a lot of restrictions and limitations coming along. Um, as far as equipment, parts availability, resources, um, just knowledge that's out there. A lot of people like hiding stuff, like Jason was mentioning. Um, just keeping that to themselves. I foresee a lot of mergers happening uh, with these companies, um, especially with, like Trimedics buying out everyone, all these Avante Health being, buying everyone, and that, that's that's on the um, you know on the third party side. So I do see that a lot of those partnerships are separating business owners from independence so that's that's what i forced you from here 10 years interesting all right guys thanks uh we're gonna have to try and cover a few more questions uh, a little bit faster from the the people that are assigned them in uh, i think we got a lot of them to go through guys we'll, we'll have to do this again man this is fun i love i love talking with y'all all right, great. So our next question is, as a newer biomed, I am starting to look at training for a specialization to have. Any recommendations on what is a good one to choose early on in your career? Oh man, if, if you're a junior level biomed and you're just getting in, if you can get into surgery, and I, I mean, a lot of people avoid surgery, but you're gonna get a huge amount of experience really quickly. And it just gives you uh, a lot of knowledge in, you know, pneumatics, hydraulics. You're going to get uh, a lot of motors, uh, a lot of troubleshooting skills. And the thing is, is you're going to have to think fast. And that's why a lot of people don't like surgery is because, you know, it's, it's a high tempo type of job. But at the same time, it's going to challenge you. And a lot of junior biomeds love a challenge. So if I could specialize in something, I'd do it the same way. I'd go into surgery right from the bat. So what do you guys think? I would take a little bit of, um, I, I agree, I've been on surgery teams and I feel like uh, surgical, surgery is a great, um, is really a great place to start um, as far as like uh, just having that breadth and also being able to offer, operate in a difficult environment. I think, you know, being around things that are messy and, you know, practicing um, under stress, which I like that aspect of it. But I would take a little bit of a different take. My answer, I would say, 
I would specialize in troubleshooting. I would become a master troubleshooter. I would do everything I could to learn every possible technique to become the very best at, at, at that aspect of our job. Because if you're able to troubleshoot, if you're able to get to the bottom of tricky repairs, because you understand how, because to troubleshoot, you've got to know what it's doing, what it's supposed to be doing, which means you've got to be in the book and you've got to have a good sense around the equipment. And that just comes from, you know, really just having exposure. So, you know, be a really a, a go-getter, just do what is needed. And then while you're at it, become the best that you can to understand that. And also that pile of broken equipment, focus on that. Focus on the things that other people can't fix. And that's how you're gonna really know when you're getting there, when you're able to produce results, other people can't. And then just keep developing that. Because if you can troubleshoot, you are gonna be invaluable in any organization you're in. Hey, Jason, to piggyback off that, the way that you record videos is, I think, the reason I think that that's the future is because you are there to experience the process. It's the process that took us so long to learn as biomeds. Like as soon as you step in the door, how do you go through the process of troubleshooting? It's the one thing that I've tried to relay to other people. And that's why the journeyman system is so awesome is because somebody's there to accompany you through the process. So you learn how they do it and then you take it one step better. But I, I completely agree, man. And a quick, I would just say a quick tip for that individual because it sounds like they're at the very beginning of their career. If you're ever around a piece of equipment and you're not quite sure, you know, what's going on with it, because there, you might be asked to do something like that you've never done before. Like my job is I, I walk in the door of a building I've never been in before and work on a problem that I don't even know what I'm walking into. So like my whole life is just being thrown in the fire every day and I love it. But for pieces of equipment that you don't fully understand, what you do is you very uh, smoothly ask the customer, um, you say, hey, um, can you show me exactly what it's doing or not doing? And what you do is you get them to go ahead and use that equipment in front of you to show you how they use it. And then um, uh, uh, familiar, familiarize yourself also with the book because what you're gonna find is that a lot of problems that we have in is a biomed are really like some sort of an operator error. Um, as my friend used to joke around, the problem is somewhere between the chair and the keyboard. and uh, so you you have to learn how to have that um, you know type of a, a ability to kind of you know not you know you have to still maintain their trust, but you've also got to still be able to let them off the hook when it's their fault. Um, I will say I've been around biomeds that are very quick to slam customers, and as a small business owner, I will say every office I'm in, it's because they let me be there. So um, we'll find that. Uh, customers will be very truthful with us if we don't beat them up with their mistakes. We educate them and we stay on their side. Um, but that's what—that's how I would um, respond to that. Excellent. What about you, Eddie? Well, I, I think uh, as an entry level, try to learn as much as you can. Um, figure out what you like. I mean, there's different specialties for a reason. Um, you might get pay, high pay, high paying jobs in imaging, but you might hate it. Um, so figure out what you like and pursue that, but not only not only look at right now, look at where you want to be. Do you want to still become a tech? You want to become a lead? You want to be a manager, director? And then figure out what is going to put you in that path. And I would say take that into consideration with when you're thinking. I mean, there's you could do one thing. Say you start in surgery. I, I love surgery. That was my thing at Kaiser. Um, but you figure out different fields that might excite you more, might be able to troubleshoot more, might be able to be more hands-on instead of just PMs or you know stuff like that or minor repairs. So th there's different situations, but but always learn, ask questions. I ask a hundred thousand questions. Uh, managers tell me to stop asking questions. I still ask them. Um, the least that they could say, I, I guess, the worst thing that they could say is no. Ask them. Ask them for training. Ask them for tools. Ask them for anything that you need. Like I said, the only thing I can say is no. Just do it. I've I've gotten twenty thousand dollars worth of tools because I asked. No one else asked. I've gotten training because no one else asked. So ask and learn. I completely agree. And don't forget to ask the users. Jason already kind of brought it on. Like ask the users if you don't know what a piece of equipment does. 
ask them. They'll, they yeah. would be enthused to express their knowledge of the device, for sure. All right, guys, next question is, as a biomed working in hospitals, do you think we will be replaced by companies, reps, or techs in the future? Oh, man. This is kind of a controversial issue. And it's only controversial because there's so many third parties that are taken over, but there's pluses and minuses to third parties. And what's really interesting is if you look at the the life cycle of third parties, they come and they go. Why do they go? Because the hospital was inevitably, usually not satisfied. The costs go up. They always go up. Costs always go up. And uh, But at the same time, when you contract out third party, it's a predictable cost. So the hospitals like predictable costs. So it's there's pluses and minuses to it. All we can do is be as versatile as, as possible as technicians, which means always be ready to learn, be ready to know something else. You know, always have a fallback plan, more than one specialty. Some people only learn lab analyzers and they stuck there their entire career. It's like, why? You could have just rode along with another technician and asked about what they're working on and maybe volunteered every once in a while to work with them, but they don't. So uh, people get trapped into a niche and they're affected when, you know, you run out of options. So I don't know. What do you guys think? I would say that it feels like the friends of mine that have been affected by buyouts, like that the um, it, t it seems to be the buying company is always interested in um, in like keeping on staff. Right. Because they want continuity. And um, I think anytime you're able to retain a staff member, um, even if you're changing your shirt or whatever, um, that is going to be adv advantageous. And you might be able to use that as a negotiating tool um, to end yourself in a better situation. Um, I would say a bit of advice um, for anybody, especially because we're talking about like transitions and things like that. I would say just a piece of practical advice is that how you how you leave is how you're remembered. And what I always try to encourage people to do is try to leave on positive relationships with as many people as you can, because um, there was a situation where, um, and I, I don't know if this, I don't know if I'm ever going to have a chance to do this. Um, I got a shout out to Ted uh, or to Todd uh, Schroeder. I promise I'd wear my utility kilt from the the uh, the uh, um, UC Davis Medical Center. I was there for 10 glorious months. I got in the door as a NICU guy. Um, this was um, just a foot in the door and I was able to go over to imaging, but then I had another amazing opportunity three miles from my home. And while I was there, I uh, met some amazing people, but I was only there 10 months. And it was really hard because I cut out 90 miles a day of driving um, for an opportunity um, and this is a major university. I mean, just a really great job. I mean, great. I mean, wonderful people. I love them. And so like, um, but I, tr I, I'm still friends with them to this day and, um, they're for me. I told them about the webinar today, but I would definitely say like, like any movement, I think like the future of your career as a biomed is treat people right. And to basically leave as positively as you can, no matter what the circumstances are, because it's a round world. And you're always going to have somebody comes back in and you don't want to be that guy that, you know, like kind of just said, well, screw you, you know, and and then all of a sudden you're you're kind of like that. That other dude is your boss now or, or he's the guy you're interviewing with. So um, that's what I would kind of say about that is I wouldn't really so much be so concerned about how it, just know that it's going to be up to you to create your own opportunity. You've got the world by the tail. If you're entering this career field, good on you. You've got the world by the tail. Just make it the best you can, and your positive attitude is going to carry you far. So I think that um, there's high probability, high uh, chances that since everyone's buying out everyone, um, there's more of a chance for non-union shops to I guess essentially in, in meetings, board meetings and all that, you know, stuff like that would come up. Uh, but I would say don't let that scare you. Um, most of the time, if they buy out or, or, you know, they bring a third party in, they're always looking for techs. So whether you're working directly for the hospital or you're, direct, you're working for a third party now, but at the same location, 
you know, it's, it's all going to be good. Um, so don't let that affect your ability. Always continue to learn. Um, try to enhance yourself and make yourself more valuable. All right. Uh, let's see if we can get through a few more questions before our time runs out. All right. Here is our next one. The trend to repair devices uh, to repair devices now to replace the whole board instead of component level repair because the vendor no longer supports parts in some cases. What are your takes on this? Well, you always have one option for sure, and that is third-party parts. And uh, I mean, take take for instance surgical lights. I mean, there's so many hospitals have surgical lights that are 30 years old, for real. And the thing is, is there are still third-party options out there that sell those parts. So, I, I mean, if you're under co budget constraint, there are options. And, you know, that's that's one of the things that we're trying to get out there is you don't just have options for parts. You have options for training. There, there are more options now than there were 10 years ago, for sure. So definitely ask for help. Ask, the, ask public uh, forums. If you have questions, go on MedWrench and ask a question. Hey, where can I find a part for this? Use your tools, okay? I would say um, one of the things that I would really encourage uh, you to uh, look in is eBay, um, look for other um, used equipment. Um, I will say dental is really an interesting animal because the, like, uh, you know, I'll admit here that I haven't used my electrical safety meter uh, analyzer in about probably nine months. It's like that. And it might not make a lot of sense like that, but I'm going to tell you dental is a different world. Um, but as far as biomed goes, um, one of the technologies that now we're talking about the future and I haven't had a chance to bring it up, but um, I love 3D printing. And I think 3D printing has a place in um, uh, biomed because there are like little covers, there are little non-critical components. I know Eddie is machining. He's doing, you know, maybe he can talk a little bit about this, but, but I think 3D printing, kind of creating some of your own options. You have to use good judgment though. And I think you've got to have your hospital system on board with what solutions you use, but using like a FLIR camera. Innovation is really part of extending the life of equipment and saving your hospital system money. And I think if you can tell the story of what you're doing to save them money and get them on board and show them how your innovation can save them money, that's a great thing. Yeah, I think definitely look into uh, third-party resources. I know that uh, there's a lot of resources out there, um, a lot of parts, uh, stock, I mean, there's facilities that I've been to that I do third-party service for a third party, um, or I, yeah, I do contract work, but they have stockpiles of parts. Um, feel free to reach out to, to, you know, different companies and see if they have those parts. If replacement's not within, you know, the budget, I know that there's different budget levels and, and budget types. Definitely look, and, and yeah, I mean, I do a lot of 3D printing. I do, like, I'm doing, like, Custom, this is like a custom mount for um, a holder for the TSI certifier. So they're laying on the floor. I just, you know, we're always trying to innovate different things. And when it comes to the medical stuff, um, there's companies that are making replacement parts. And, um, you know, that's something that we're getting into with our resin printer, our 3D printers, our large format printers. Um, so I think that's a that's whole different topic. Uh, but there's resources out there. And, uh, you know, for one off parts or anything like that. You know, definitely feel free to reach out to different people. I know different people have different experiences, third parties. Um, don't always just look at OEM. There's all the alternatives that meet or exceed those requirements. I would just make sure that whatever option you choose, that you're choosing the appropriate level of risk. And I would definitely advise that you don't do anything that's going to put your um, hospital's um, you know, legal department in a bad way. Make sure you know what you're doing and that you have the um, approval of your, of your chain because things that make sense to us on the ground level, if you don't have buy-in from your leadership, it could put you in a bad way. So just make sure you're, you're being smart about it, but definitely I, I think there's enough room to innovate and I think you should. Okay. All right, guys, our next question is, what other websites or platforms do you use if you can't find answers on YouTube. Okay, uh, that's a kind of a good one. 
Um, probably one of the leading sources. I mean, if, if we don't go to MedWrench forums, I mean, I usually just Google the error code or whatever. And usually MedWrench is obviously one of the first ones that pops up. But uh, other than that, it's usually me going out to, you know, that's one of the advantages of having the YouTube channels. We have a network, you know. But also, if you network really well on LinkedIn, you can just post a post out there like, hey, I'm looking for a job in this area or, hey, I've got this error code with this device. And people are excited to be able to help you. The, the community, it is a community. We are here to help each other for sure. So uh, I use LinkedIn for sometimes for questions. Sometimes I reach out to my viewers if I have a question that's pretty serious. Um, I've I've helped people get jobs this way, you know, reaching out. So I mean, social media is is the future for everything, for all, even just general text. Eddie and I are both part of a dental uh, equipment repair group on Facebook, and this is a group with a uh, less than 200 people on it, but they're from all different. Uh, different, like some are from manufacturer, big manufacturers, a lot are independents, some are owners, and um, same thing. We post a question out there. Um, we, uh, I've got in my warehouse, I've got a ton of equipment, so people will be looking for something like a needle in a haystack, and if, if we have it, we'll provide that to them and, and uh, like that, or if somebody has a question, um, we'll, uh, um, my, the, this group is really great for sterilizer, like tabletop sterilizer repairs. There's a lot of really knowledgeable people on there, but definitely Facebook groups. And, and I would encourage you all, um, just because one doesn't currently exist, doesn't mean you can't get a couple buddies together and start one. Because if you have a, a group with about, you know, with 20 or 30, like really solid texts on it, and it kind of gravitates in more text, you're going to find that you're just going to, like you just ask the question and then troubleshoot and then you come back and you dip in on, on the uh, conversation and the answer might be there waiting for you. Yeah, there's also, uh, I'm on Military Biomeds um, on Facebook. Uh, there's a couple, I think it's Biomed World is another one. And then there's a couple other Facebook groups as well. MedWrench, um, I love Frank's. I know you can't ask questions, but manuals and there's a lot of resource there. Um, mm -hmm. And there's been third parties that I've, I've actually called. Uh, maybe they're experts in, say, infusion pumps and I ask them, hey, you know, this error I haven't seen before, what, what would you recommend? Uh, most of the time, they'll, they'll be more than happy to help you out. So feel free to reach out to third parties as well. That's a good point, Eddie. I like, um, what I'll do is I find who, what company is selling what I'm trying to fix used, because typically they've got some sort of a warehouse and they might even have some of those parts there. And a lot of times they will help you. It's, it's definitely not cutthroat when you get into small business. I feel like there's a lot of small businesses willing to help out health systems, especially because you know they wanna sell that stuff. And if you can come at them with hospital money, man, they're really motivated to help you out. Good answers, guys. All right, next up is, are there any risks or liabilities that you share when you create videos? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. So uh, at my particular hospital, any single day, I'm expected to get fired. <laughs> That's the truth. Because although I try and isolate myself and record videos in the middle of the night and whatnot, there's still a hospital policy that says absolutely no recordings whatsoever. And I have had people try and get me fired before. It's, it's, so there are risks. I mean, regardless, uh, there's always PHI. You know, you got to be cognizant of your environment when you're recording a video. But I mean, some of the most, the, the best content you can have is sometimes on site. I mean, if I'm having an issue, I take a, a piece of equipment to my shop, I should be able to record what's going on with it. Because this is stuff that could be really like FDA type of stuff that, that should be reported. And if I can resolve it through a quick video, you know, making people aware that this problem exists, then why go through the whole FDA process and, and waste everybody's time, you know, a couple months when this hazard that we can get resolved today. Um, so yeah, there are risks. There's definitely risk. PHI is number one. It's a big no-no. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like the risk um, th that there are probably some legal, you know, hurdles, but I feel like everybody's making videos nowadays. And so in my videos, I try to have like this little kind of blanket, you know, like, hey, this is for um, entertainment only. And 
you know, I mean, it's clear that what we do is dangerous. Like in my little intro that I have, I have this one time when I got my screwdriver across a 220 and it's like this, the biggest spark. It's like kind of right in my intro and uh, my tech was there filming me. And so, you know, there's, you can like, we can really like people get hurt if they do some of the stuff we're doing, but I feel at some point, um, you know, like, what do you do? Do you like hold back the information or the experience? because somebody might hurt themselves or do you just basically say look dude this if if you, if you shouldn't be doing this if then then don't do it you know but but i mean is somebody really going to come after me and try and maybe if i'm worth more maybe i might be more of a target but maybe if i'm worth more then i'll have a legal department or something like that but right now i'm just um kind of just trying to take one day at a time i'm trying to act in good faith towards the community and so um, in life, I feel like that's what we, all we can really do, right? Treat people right, do the right thing, and then take the experiences that happen to us and adjust our behaviors accordingly um, based on what happens. Because you might, you know, sometimes the liability, like if, if I was really worried about liability, I don't think I would have started my business. You know, I've got insurance and stuff, but, and I think to kind of just tease the subject, um, don't let a fear of liability stop you from reaching out to uh, local companies who are independents that might need some side help and that might be an opportunity for you to moonlight because i'm talking to you if you know how to repair biomedical equipment and you're bored at night or you're bored after work look google dental equipment repair google autoclave repair google any independent you can find and just call them be like hey i'm so and so i know how to repair biomedical equipment I would, I'll bet you a beer that if you, if you make that call, you're going to have some opportunities coming your way. Yeah, that's a lot of beer, Jason. That's all right. You have to go to Costco, <laughs> get a pallet, man. That's all right. <laughs> Kirkland's um, back. <laughs> I, th I think uh, as long as there, this, you know, you have a disclaimer or uh, you're not trying to copyright anything, um, mm -hmm. I think you should be okay. Um, if you're kind of providing information for entertainment purposes, I think it should be okay. If there's any legal issues, um, then, you know, with disclaimers and everything else that you could do online, I'm pretty sure there's ways to avoid it. But don't let that stop you from, from providing information out there. I know a lot of uh, OEMs and such don't like providing any information um, or, hey, you have to send it in for a flat rate. We're not going to tell you what's wrong with it. And it, it could be something very simple. Um, so to show and save organizations money um third parties whatever i think that's more important in the long run all right guys our time together today has come to an end but i would like to thank you all eddie jason justin for your time today what a great presentation and this has been very enjoyable i would like to encourage everyone to visit our sponsor today to learn more about the services they provide to our industry. Please visit medwrench.com. A quick reminder to our audience that you can obtain your CE certificate by completing today's post-webinar survey. The survey will be emailed to you in approximately one hour. You'll be, you must complete the survey to receive your one CE credit from the ACI, and you will be able to download the certificate immediately after the survey is submitted. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. And we'll be back very soon with another webinar. Make sure to visit our website, webinarwednesday.live, for more details and for complimentary registration. Thank you all and have a fantastic day. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. This is awesome. I hope we can do it again soon. Yes, yes. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Take care. Thank you.